break here. Been playing a lot of Monster Hunter Sunbreak or Rise Sunbreak lately. I figured I'd post a few video or a video on a few good builds. It's pre the latest update that's set to come out in a few weeks. I don't know what that is when it releases Valkana and the other ones, but this about the best one I could put together at the moment. Now I've got three. This is the great sword build. You can go over the specs right quick. As you can see it's 414. Of course when you go in the training area it maxes you out on your attack and all that so it's a little higher. But it's 414 attack, 50% affinity, 1055 defense. Which is all really good. But here's where it really gets good. I'm going to skill info. You got a level 7 attack boost which is 10% attack plus 10% bonus. Level 7 crit eye which is 40% affinity. And I like to run level 7 defense boost just because you know, as you get into upper level anomaly investigations they get to where they can take you out pretty quick. But 10% defense, 35 bonus and plus 5 on all elemental resistance. Level 3 crit boost so that's 40% extra on every hit that's a yellow hit basically because this is a hundred percent affinity build weakness exploit three which just gives you 50 more fifty percent more affinity on a yellow hit i really like master's touch i didn't think i would like it as much but it it doesn't say on here but it gives you 80 percent chance to lose no sharpness on critical hits and being as you're running a hundred percent affinity build that's basically all the time unless you're not getting yellow hits Focus for the Great Sword is good because it gives you 15% faster charge times. I found on Great Sword, the quicker you can get your attacks off, it's almost like an attack boost. It's all about making it quicker. And I just started running Quick Sheath on it, which I really like because if you put your weapon up faster, get more attacks in, it's almost like a damage boost. I like running level 3 stun resistance, and most of these are the same on all three builds. And just because in a higher anomaly investigation if you get stunned most of the time the follow-up attack takes you out uh, this comes on the gear which i run one more level of it and really it doesn't do the black i've got a blast build that it helps with 10 percent blast build up but the prevents poison and venom really helps especially on the stuff that does venom the powder mantle is really good and if you haven't seen it or used it you build up an aura around you it starts out orange and if you get hit when it's orange, it does damage to the monster, but does a little extra damage to you, about 10 to 15 percent that I've seen. But if you don't take a hit and it turns blue, on average, that attack will do five to 600 extra, you know, to the monster. So it's basically free damage. If you're not taking hits, you're doing extra damage. Punishing draw is just some talisman I got on this build, but it, it helps with this because the draw attacks do a small amount of stun and plus five attack on any draw attack. Resentment was just kind of in the curious crafting it spun around, but it's plus five while you have a red portion of your health. Plus one, uh, level one latent power, I like to keep on all my builds because while it's active, it's 10% affinity, which on my other two builds, you need that 10% to get to 100%. And it seems to, after a few minutes, it activates for a few minutes and then, you know, so on and so forth. So it's on a good deal of the time. Corrective polish is just something that spun on the curious crafting, but it's good. 30 seconds after sharpening, you lose no sharpness. Ballistics is something left over because I don't use any gunner. Stamina Thief was spun on Curious Crafting, but it's good. 20% exhaust power, it always helps. Level 1 French free, Flint Freeze on the feet, which is always good for multiplayer because it prevents knockbacks. And what it does, it keeps people hitting you with their weapons from staggering and making you flinch during multiplayer, so that helps a lot. And that's basically... We can look at the armor in a minute, but that's it. And to get everything... I can't see it from here. The weapon is fully augmented with a plus 20 attack bonus. We'll look at that in a minute. But in order to get to that, you have to be at least 181 anomaly. So, I mean, it takes some grinding to really get it. But I'm not the best great sword player. But it does some pretty decent damage. But 
you know, the gameplay is kind of your own. This is just builds I found. All right, we'll check out a Switch X build next, which I really like. It's the Camellios Switch X. It's got a little less, or actually it's got a little more damage, 425 attack. It's 40% affinity, that's where the latent power really helps. And this is a little different, the same seven, and I mean these you want to keep at seven. Attack boost, crit eye, defense boost, crit boost, max, weakness exploit, max. Uh, Master's touches on armor, that's really good. But this one I've got poison attack, because it's a poison weapon. Level three, it's 20% poison buildup. Still got stun resistance, still got the Osta Blessing. And this one I was running Rapid Morph, and it's really cool for switch axes because your morph attacks, this gives them 30% more speed and 20% more damage. So when you mix in morph attacks, you're getting that 20% damage buff. Still got the Powder Man. And this one I threw 4A in here. I could only manage to get two levels. But while the monster's poison, you pick up the extra 10% affinity that you need to be at 100%. And you get plus 10 attack power, which is always good. And the rest of them is just the same as the other. It was the same armor. But yeah, on any time like this is R2 attack. No, I'm still in this stuff. R2 attack, you get a 20% damage bonus. And there's your R2. I like to do two hits from the sword and then R2 back into that, R2 back into the sword, two hits. It causes you to your gauge not to build up quite as quick, but you can see it puts out a massive amount. Of, I build it up till you can see the explosion on the powder mantle if you haven't ever seen it before. It, see there it was the 531, and it'll do different on different monsters. Most I've seen it hit is like 680. It just kind of depends on the monster's weakness. Alright, one last, and this is the dual blade build. And the hit count on the powder mantle is different for each one, which it seems kind of skewed toward the long sword. Whoop, that's the wrong build. Because if you get it to level 3 on long sword, it only takes 16 hits to activate it. I think at level three on dual plates, it takes 190 hits to make it pop. It seems very one-sided. All right, you see, I mean, all of these are maxed out with a full plus 20 attack augment on them. But everything's still basically the same. Except for on this one, I went toward the blast side of it. I was wanting to, and I run level three burst on dual blades. And what it does is after five hits, you get like a plus 15 attack boost, plus 15 elemental boost, which these aren't elemental weapons. So it doesn't, that part doesn't count. Actually, I, does, I do think it puts that up. Same on the powder mantle. I stuck peak performance in there because I had room for it. And a lot of times in dual blades, you know, you move enough that you can keep it active. And I was running level two blast attack because it's, I wish I had, all I had room for, but it gives another 10%. So between the Theosta blessing at 10% and this, you get an extra 20% uh, blast buildup. And the rest of them is the same. And I don't think I can show it from, I'll show it in a minute. I got a decoration slotted in these that makes the blast do more damage. It says slightly, it's a rampage decoration, but really it puts it up 20%. You see. You see blast has already hit twice on it. There's three times, four times, five, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, ten times. This the blast builds up ridiculously fast on this build.
Okay, for the equipment itself, I'm trying to keep this video kind of short, but I guess it's going to drag on some. Alright, these are the Scorn Magnum Aloe Blades. So it takes a bit of farming to get them. Actually, a lot. They're really hard to get. Will it show it on here? Yeah, there's the full attack augment. Eight slot, or is that three? So yeah, eight slots plus 20 attack on those. And this is the same armor for every build, just swapping up the decorations a bit. And I'll show the decorations on each build here in a minute. But this is the augments I spun for. This one's just got a slot augment. And, you know, plus four in defense, not much. This one's just got extra slot augment, plus three. It seems like the Risen Kaiser stuff is really hard to get good rolls on, on the augment. All right, this one I uh, got a pretty good roll on. I got an extra plus two slot added. Didn't lose any defense and lost one ballistics and one got the picked up the one protective polish, but I don't use ballistics anyway, so not a big loss there. This one I picked up extra slot, picked up the resentment and lost one level of ballistics, which there again, I don't use the guns. And this one here upgraded the slot and picked up the stamina thief. Lost one level of flinch free which flinch free is all you need to run one level is all you need really anything more than that's just a waste okay on the talisman this thing took forever to get i bet you i've made 300 attack boost talismans to get the one i actually wanted and it's still not exactly right but what you want what you've got to have on it is level three attack boost and then whatever other secondary skill and you have to have at least a level two decoration slot in it in order for it to work. Now I kept the, this is the Furious Rajang legs because they come with level two crit boost on them. And the rest of it is just from GM Smith slot in there, but you, only way I could get the all out, the everything together was to keep these. As far as decorations go, you see, I mean, it pre update, you don't have any level four attack decos or level four chain decos or any of that, so you're really kind of limited to how much you can put in it. Right here's the decorations for this setup, and then the other ones you just substitute the flawless and the blast. I mean, some of them stay the same. You'll always keep the attack ones in there, the tenderizer, because you have to have it. And I like running defense, but if you didn't run defense boost, you could put something else in there. And it's got a lot of level one slot, one slot, so really you can't get nothing too great in there, so. But that's basically it on the switch axe. Everything stays basically the same except for us substituting some venom, a couple of 4A, and I set up the, I got the quick switch, which is the rapid morph. I got two of those in there. Actually, I wound up being able to roll a talisman that had rapid morph on it, so it freed it up. But like I said, it took forever to get one drop that had a level two slot. Other one's the great sword. The great sword's kind of straightforward because it's not an elemental build, but you could make it. But I liked it because this great sword comes automatically with 10% affinity on it. So for this build, it's true 100% affinity every time you get a yellow hit. So you've never got that chance of your big hit dropping off and you losing the 40% attack bonus on it. It's always there. And of course, it's just maxed out when attack plus 20. I don't know, as far as decorations, the only difference is I just put in a level 4 sheath. I got a level 4 charger for the uh, focus so it charges faster. Another charger, another quick sheath, and everything else is just the same. And I've just started using quick sheath, and I really like it. As you can see from here, well, it's kind of slow you roll afterwards, but hit, roll, 
and then it just puts it up immediately and it allows you to hit roll for the hit roll so you can get off a lot more attacks in a lot less time that's basically it now I will go back I think I'm going to do another video just for the curious crafting because this is going to take a minute. I'm trying to get this video not to last too long. But anyway, if you like to build, have any questions or need to know anything about it, just leave me a comment. I said, I think the sun break has probably been beat to death with videos. But this is something I came up with and you know, Capcom decided to make us wait till the end of August to get the next update. So this is going to be the build that you're running for a while if you're like me and you want to keep playing it. Alright, well, hope you liked the video. If you do, give it a like. Thank you.